Psalm 119, we'll find our way back into Psalm 119 this evening, and we will get into that. I will do my best to see. Psalm 119, we'll pick up verse 18. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of the law. I may stranger in the earth, hide not thy commandments from me. We looked a little bit at this last time. My soul breaks for the longing that it hath unto my judgments at all times. Thou hast rebuked the proud, they are cursed, which do err from the commandments. Remove from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept thy testimonies. The princesses, they also do sit and speak against me, but they, but thy servant did meditate in thy statutes. Thy testimonies also are, de, are my delight and my counselors. The psalmist Starts off in verse 18, a quick review. Remember from last time, he makes mention of the wonderful truth of God's Word. The wonderful truths of Scripture. The wonderfulness of the Word of God, what you have laying in your lap this evening, or what you have in front of you this evening, is literally the Word of God. God. Think about that. It's literally His Word spoken to you. And you are a privileged person. You are a privileged people. I'm a privileged person. We are most definitely privileged. Privileged how? Because we have this book that contains deep spiritual truths, that contains spiritual truths for our, our everyday life. As we live in this land, as we are a foreigner in this land, as verse 19 says, as we are a foreigner in this land, we are a foreigner, but yet we have the instructions Yet we have the truth. The truth of a holy, righteous God. The truth of a God who's allowed us, who's given us the privilege to open up this book and to, and to read it. Giving us the ability to understand it. You only understand it because He's given you the ability to understand it. And you do all this, I do all this while we are, He's talking so in a, in a, in a, in a way, we are foreigners in this land. We are passing through. That's all we're doing. That's all you and I are doing. We don't belong here. He's chosen us out of this land, out of this people, for His own. And the psalmist says, don't hide your commands from me in verse 19. Hide not thy commandments from me. I'm always overwhelmed, he says in verse 20. My soul breaks for a longing that it hath unto thy judgments at all times. I'm overwhelmed with this desire for your regulations, for your, for your word. We talked about this the last time. What are you overwhelmed about? I hope it's scripture. I hope it's God. I hope it's the Lord. I hope it's who he is to you. I hope that is what overwhelms you. I hope that is what consumes you. There's so many things pulling at you. There's so many things pulling at me. But may, may, may we be careful in not to let them things overwhelm us. 
But may we be overwhelmed with the scriptures. With what it is to us. With what it is to us. May we be overwhelmed with the truth. This word that leads and guides and directs you. That is, a, that is a lamp, that is a light unto your feet and path. This word. May we be overwhelmed. You rebuke the arrogant. Those who wander from your commands are cursed. The ones who, who refuse to obey Scripture. Those find themselves in a cursed life, he says. Those who wander from your commands are cursed people. All the way filled in the Old Testament as well in the New. Men and women who chose to to wander from the truth, to go a different path, to, to stay on the path of depravity, or even those who found themselves wanting from the truth as for a time as believers found themselves what? Struggling in, in the depth of sin. But they were different as believers. They were, they were pulled out of it and but for those that, that bear the curse themselves, unlike the believer, see the believer can look at the cross of Christ and see that He is the one who bore the sins. Cursed is He that hangs on what? On the tree, right? Those who wonder from your commands are cursed. There's a lot of our own society, I should say, our own nation. It's a nation that is bearing judgment day after day, given a cursing of judgment day after day. Why? Because they've wondered from what? The truth. They've wandered from the truth. But when you see a when you see a, a, a believer in Christ, one that's truly of the faith, and you see them wander, it's sort of what? It startles you, doesn't it? It should. Because you know they're wandering away from solid ground, if you will. Spiritually. And they're wandering into a place where there is nothing solid. They're being sucked away from the glory of Christ and who He is. You rebuke the arrogant. Look around you today. The proud, the arrogant. We live in a society of arrogant people. We live in a society of proud people. We live in a society that's, that's just filled with so much arrogance, so much pride. Just filled with it from top to bottom. Filled with the arrogancy of, of, of desiring riches more and more and more. Never enough. And it's, this, it's as if the Lord has cursed some of those people with more and more riches. More and more riches to where it just so totally consumes them. They're just completely blanked out from anything of deep truth. 
You rebuke the arrogant. You will rebuke them. You will, O oh God, is what the psalmist is saying. You will. Let you rebuke the arrogant. Let you rebuke the prideful. Let you rebuke the ones that wander from your truth. They're the cursed ones. They're the cursed ones. They're the ones that are cursed and damned. It's them. Don't let them scorn. Don't let them insult me. Remove from me reproach and contempt, for I've kept thy testimonies. Don't let them scorn and insult me, for I've obeyed your laws. Not in a prideful way. Is the psalmist saying in a prideful way I obeyed your truth? No, he's not saying in a prideful way. By no means. I've obeyed your law. I've followed your truth. Don't let them scorn and insult me, Lord. I'm, for I'm one of yours. I'm one of yours. Remember Paul to Timothy. I fought the faith. I fought the fight. I kept the faith. I did what was asked of me. Prideful? No. No. Just a soldier of Christ in his latter years who's looking back and he's saying, I've I fought it. I've kept it. I fought it and I kept it. I obeyed your laws. I obeyed your truth. A man doesn't have to stand up in front of two, three thousand people every week to say that He's kept the faith. He's obeyed the truth. He's obeyed the law. A woman doesn't have to do that. It's simple obedience to where the Lord God has placed you in your life. Where He's placed you. Obeying the laws where He's placed you. Obeying the truth where He's placed you. Having a life of obedience in the area He's placed you in. Not becoming discouraged. It's very easy to become discouraged, isn't it? I mean, look around. There's four, five, six, seven, eight of us. Eight of us. You can't be here this evening for whatever reasons, but you know where we're going with this. It's very easy to become discouraged, isn't it? I've known preachers that have said in the past, I won't preach to 25, 30 people. Why is that? Well, discouragement is one of the things, and like we're looking at tonight, arrogance is another. It's not about it's not about how many you preach to or how many women a lady teaches. It's about his or her obedience, whether it's two people or twenty two thousand people. It's the obedience. It's the obedience. Right? To obedience to the truth. It's being obedient to Christ. It's being obedient to Him. Early on in the ministry is with His disciples as He chose them. Teaching them obedience. Teaching them to obey Him. To follow Him. To be obedient to what he has to say. Teaching them that. You don't have to teach a child to disobey. He or she's got that down pat. 
But you must teach them to obey. And you and I must be taught to obey the truth. To live by the truth. To not be overwhelmed. To not, be, to not let those that insult us bother us. Yeah, they'll scorn us. Yeah, they'll insult us. But remember, you're in a world that doesn't want you anyway. You live in a society don't, that don't want you anyway. They're okay with you. I mean, you can even speak out of Scripture. They're okay with that. As long as what you say does not challenge them in how they live their lives. Spiritually speaking. I mean, Joe Olstein opens up from Scripture each and every week. The place is packed. Thousands upon thousands of people falling over each other. But just because he opens up from Scripture doesn't it means nothing. It's your obedience to it. Your obedience. How obedient is he to the truth? To speaking the truth no matter who's there. Because listen, as you live in this world, as it says in verse 23, even princesses or princess, princess sit and speak against me. Even they will sit and speak against you. Even the higher ups will sit and speak against you. Even those who, even those who, who sit high and lofty, by a worldly standard, they'll speak against you. So let it be. Let it be. You say, well, how do I overcome that? How do I overcome such, such? Friction or such speaking against me, such scorn, so insult, so many insults come in my way. How do I overcome that? What do I do? How do I see myself through that? What do I tap into? What, what, however, you want to word it to get through it. How do I get past that? Seems like it doesn't take much to knock the average believer. Off his or her horse, if you will. Just doesn't take much. Yes. Question is, how do you get past it? Tina said his key is in the second half of, half of the verse, which is what? I will meditate on your what? Your decrees, your statutes, your regulations, your scripture, your law. Whatever translation you're looking at. I will meditate on this. This. We'll meditate on this. Your word. When you find yourself being cursed by others or scorned by others or insulted by others spoke to in a, in a derogatory hateful way understand what Understand that the way through this is what the psalmist is saying in Psalm 119 verse 23. When this happens, I will meditate. I will meditate on your word, he says. When this happens, I will meditate on your word. I will meditate on your truth. I will meditate on the, on the beauty of Scripture. Thy word, thy word, 
that I've hid in my heart that I might not what? Sin against you. I will not sin against you. I've hid your word deep in me. Your word gives me the peace that I need. I will not lash back in anger. I will not draw my sword. Right? I will not draw my sword in anger and go for the head and only get the ear. But I will meditate on your degrees, your statutes, your word. We've talked about it a couple weeks ago. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study the word to show yourself approved. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. <clears throat> Study so you can rightly divide scripture. So you don't sound like some nut. Uninformed. Unlearned. You don't sound like that person. It was an example. I was talking to somebody this past week and about the events of today. And he said, You know, he said, You know, Jesus is on his knees begging God just for a little bit more time. Then hopefully America will turn around. I didn't know what to say. I've never heard somebody say that Jesus is on his knees begging God for more time for America to turn around. Complete nonsense. It don't make sense. Yes. It's a set time when everything's going to be made. It's a set time and I and my Father are one, right? But that's what happens when somebody that has been churched for many years of their lives but never taught. Right? It's just a matter of time before their ignorance shows itself. And we'll meditate on your decrees, Psalm 119, verse 23. Why? Because it's your word. It's your decrees. It's your statutes. That's what gets me through. The thing is, you don't wait till the war begins to sharpen your sword. Yeah, very well you put. It yeah. sharp. Yes. You're prepared way before the war begins. If you wait till the war starts to sharpen your sword, you've already lost. Yeah. And here's the thing. As Christians, the war is already going on. Yeah. And you better start. You better be hitting the ground yeah. with your sword. You're exactly right. Because you are new Christians, especially, it's going to be under attack. So it's true. Oh. Go ahead. Thing is, it's sneaking inside the church. Yeah. You know, the last few times I've preached it, you know, out of Second Corinthians eleven, that's what that's all about is the wolves sneaking in. The wolves sneaking in. You, they're pretending. They're sounding just like the Christians. They're sounding like they know what's going on, but they're bringing in false doctrine. Yeah. They're, they're bringing these forged letters of recommendation from apostles. Oh, Paul, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Paul, that's that's old news. This is new news. You know, don't listen to him. He's just trying to drag you down. Listen to us. We're better. We got the new message. We got the better message. Yes. And it's still going on. Still going on. Still going on. A new way, a different way. That's the big thing today in the churches. That's that's there's a huge push for that. It's it's deception. Yes. You, you, and him, you and 
And that new way is, yeah, you're exactly right, David. following the same way and I don't believe anybody tracks something that tight. There's too much stuff here that's been preached on and been agreeing. Yes. It, when you hear that you ought to watch your sits. You ought to watch your rear end. Because for some reason it is the Lord's preparing us to be ready for that. Yeah. That stuff. And there's a lot of it going on. There's a lot of it going on. And the evil one will use whatever he has to use to take a shot at the church. And I think we're in a day and time now he's, he's seen that he can easily use the children. That's another thing that's a lot of that's cracking up to. Uh, our families. Or it's made, I don't think I started to say maybe it's my imagination, but I don't, it, don't think that ain't right. That's not true. It's a lot of it going on, getting into yeah. the different families. The family's been hit hard over the past year. Yeah. And the devil's working through our youngins and working through our jobs and working through circumstances and doing the whole career. Yes, talk. It's the same, but yeah. it's different. It's, it's got a different feel to it. I don't go by feeling, but it's it's vicious. I mean, it's a vicious turn. Used to it was sneaky. Yeah. Now it's not sneaky. No, 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 no. It's now, it's not, yeah, it's yeah. A now it's wide head. open. Yeah, coming at us hard and heavy. Yeah. Talking to somebody today, uh, she said, oh, you have, they said, you have service tonight. I said, yeah. And the response is, wow, well, they said, you still do, like, services, you know, services? Well, yeah, we have service on Wednesday. So, eh, we don't, we don't do that no more. We just got activities for the kids on Wednesday nights and just a, maybe a class or two or something. Go to a rather big church. They do. And, but you can see the, the drive. You can see where they're going with that. No, and and you're exactly and you're you're exactly right. Is that Gloria? Is that your activities only take you so far? Sooner or later, you got to get off the bus, the activity bus. A basketball game is not going to teach you about the Lord. No, no. Well, it's yeah. No. Yeah. No. You notice in verse twenty-three, I will meditate. I will meditate. Which is what? I will take time, right? To think on you, Lord. To think on your word. I will meditate on your word. I will study your word. Do you think Paul was so adamant? Again, back to Timothy. To get young Timothy to study. To get him to meditate on Scripture. If all these new 2020, 2021 ways or 2015 ways of doing things that we've been doing for the last 10 years or even sooner than that, way before then, if they worked, why all of a sudden are they showing up now? I mean, it, it doesn't, you see in Scripture, those that truly benefit of Scripture are those who meditate on the Word of God. Those who study Scripture. Those who find their life a life full of prayer. When that happens, they're the ones that can honestly say, verse 24, your laws, they please me. Pleases me. Your testimonies are my delight. They don't rub you the wrong way no. either. I mean, they don't. No. They ain't friction. No. You don't have friction with them when you read it. No. Well, you know, like Echo was a and she was hearing a preacher 
on TV and she said, I don't remember exactly what I was expecting or what she said, Mom, is that right? I don't remember that. And I thought, you know, a lot of kids would have thought, hmm, from CNN. You know, but Echo caught on to it and she said, Mom, is that right? You know, said right. I said, Echo, I said, something ain't quite right with that statement. I said, I remember it's, mm -hmm. it's not quite right. Yeah. No, and and you and you, what you do is you end up. You, hopefully, you're a good Berean, and you go back as Acts seventeen eleven says to go back to Scripture, see if these things are so, see if these things line up with what the Word of God has to say. That's what you do. Your laws, it pleases me. Your laws give me what wise what advice. You want wisdom? You want wise advice in everyday life? Open up God's Word. Open up God's Word. You can ask ten different people for advice and you're probably going to get eight different answers. Right? It's reality. And every one of them might be dispelled by something. Yeah. If you go to this... Mm -hmm. There's no deception in this Bible. No. But in that mankind, there's deception in, in men. And you'll get a different tale for everything you, you look at. Yeah. And I keep thinking about what you and uh, Justin have been preaching on. Uh, you can, when you hear something other that's been said, and you're not sure about it, is the Lord just lets you know there's something other off, and you can't quite put your finger on it till you write it down and get in the Bible and write it down. Yeah. And that's how you have to do it, like you were saying a while ago. Our churches have quit running things down. I mean, they've quit looking and, and finding out yeah. if it's right or it's wrong. And it could very well be right. Mm -hmm. But if you ain't sure, you're still on that, you know, I ain't going to shake your ground until you figure you learn and, and go and you look it up and, and see it for yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you get, you get in the Bible and you, you get to reading and you get to studying and you get to thinking, it, 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 it builds you, it builds you, it builds you up. Builds you up and it makes you stronger and stronger. And that's what's wrong for our yeah. churches are anemic. Yeah, you're you're exactly right. And you're speaking of again Acts 17 11, that very night the believers sent Paul and Paul and Silas to Berea. When they arrived there, they went to the Jewish synagogue, and the people of Berea were more open minded than those in Thessalonica. They listened eagerly to Paul's message. They searched the scriptures day after day to see if what Paul and Silas were saying was the truth. And as a result, many Jews believed and did as many the prominent Greek women and men. They heard what Paul and Silas had to say and they went to, to see if this was the truth. In other words, are these two men just off the rocker? Are they, are they crazy? Are they crazy? Because what they're saying just is, is, is it truth? And for many as they went and seen and got into the Old Testament scriptures that you know, we would consider today, they found that was the truth. They found it out to be the truth. They found out that what Paul and Silas were doing was giving them some very wise advice. Psalm 119, verse 24. <coughs> Wise advice is what? To believe on what I'm saying. Because it's truth. It's truth. Somebody comes to you with advice, spiritually speaking, 
you give them advice out of Scripture, you make sure they know in Scripture where it's at. You might know the verse, but you might not know the word of the verse, but you might not know the placement. Find it for them. Show it to them. That's what they're asking you for, spiritual advice. Show them. And always make a habit. Always make a habit. The verse you give them. Put a little bit of context to it. The context of the truth. Your laws, they please me. They give me wise advice. Your word gives me wise advice. It gives me everything I'll need spiritually. It's what I need. It's where I stand on the truth. I'm like a tree planted by what? The river. Firmly planted, right? As the psalmist said way back in the beginning of the book of Psalms. I'm firmly planted. I'm planted by living water. I'm planted by the, by the truth. So the thing about, you know, you, a lot of times people come to you with worldly advice and you can give them worldly advice, but that's all it is. It's worldly advice. It comes and goes. It's fleeting, right? It's unpredictable. It's like betting on the next sport game or whatever. It's, it's unpredictable. You know, playing the stock market, it's unpredictable. But Scripture is not unpredictable. Scripture is the only book, the only book that has been what it is today. It's solid, right? It hasn't changed. It don't move. It don't move. As David just said. It don't move. It's the same as it was 2,000 years yeah. ago. The reason I'm, I, I get cautious for you. Now I know uh, people use different Bibles and stuff, but with this and uh, it's a King James. I can read other Bibles. It don't make any difference. Bible is Bible. But the reason I stick with it, I grew up with it. I grew up with yeah. it. That's 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 the reason I've had it. Uh, but no matter which Bible you use, they say other Bibles, it, the word is the word, and it's the same. Yeah. It, it don't move. It don't change. So much of the wisdom and stuff people give one another day, it's changeable. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it don't stay the same. No. But something always moves. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But that's man. Man's wisdom is what? Man's wisdom is fleeting. Man's wisdom comes. Man's wisdom goes. But the Word of God stands forever. That's, that's a good thing. That's a good promise from God. I don't change. Yes. Yeah, I just don't change. His Word don't change. And <laughs> me and Gloria's had this discussion quite often in the past few weeks and in the past year. And Gloria said, if I recollect right, she said, sin is still sin. And she said, it ain't changed. No, it just yeah. it's come into her life. She said, when did the Lord change that? I said, he never did. Yeah. It's just things that's happened. And I just feel, I just feel sometimes like uh, uh, some things that I see around me today that I've never seen before in my life. And people think it's uh, it's okay to do certain stuff, and I thought, no, God ain't changed that. No. God ain't changed it at all. No. No. What bothers me anymore in the field I work, my clients I deal with all the time, is they a lot of them don't live long, and some of them are on hospice. 
som om man har böcker som om man har någon konstig stöd. She said, I was saved when I was small. But she said, I don't, she said, I got my Bible out. And I don't know how to study my Bible. I don't know how to read it. So I don't understand it. And so I was trying to help her. And of course, I didn't have a Bible with me that day, you know. I told her I'd bring one next week. And uh, I, I tried to get her one when I found out. But the only Bible she had was one she received when her daddy passed away. Mm -hmm. And the print was so small you could hardly see it. So I did give her a Bible and give her some, you know, verses to look at and, and showed her how to use them. But I felt like I kind of let her down because uh, she lived about three weeks after that. Yeah. And it makes you feel bad when you feel like, you know, if I know she needed me do this, I mean, she didn't cuss or anything like that. I didn't know that she needed the help and, and my job, unless they give me an opening, I'm not supposed to really say a whole lot to them, mm -hmm. you know. But if they give me an opening, I can, you know. But um, I always felt like I, I wished I could have helped them. Yeah. Yeah, it's... You're right, Gloria. It's the advice of Scripture. It revives us. It pleases us. You know what bothered me so bad? Her, her daughter and her granddaughter lived with her. And after she passed on, see, my job was done there. And I don't believe either one of them knew anything but the Bible at all. So I just wonder if they'll ever mm -hmm. you know anything about no. that. Maybe they'd seen her mother studying and learning something, and she mentioned it. Maybe they would have gotten yeah. into it, you know. But you, you look at that, and you, you have this regret, but there's nothing you can do about it because it's too late. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, if you don't, you're not given all opportunity. I kind of learned how to work around that a little bit more now, how I can kind of. Yeah, to give, to give wise advice, which is scripture. To teach and people to understand, as Gloria was leading to, alluding to, the sufficiency of scripture. Scripture is sufficient. It doesn't need to be changed. It doesn't need to be added to. Nothing needs to be created or recreated or redone to make Scripture more pleasing, okay? It is sufficient. It always has been. It always will be sufficient. It'll stand on its own. It'll stand on its own. Yes, it will. But the worst thing is, like her, she is, I feared what she done was just picked it up and started reading it in a place and she didn't understand what she was reading. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you don't follow references, kind of study it out. If you ain't kind of yeah. learn how to read it, then you don't know yeah. how to. Yeah. But that's what her problem was. Maybe that's the way the Lord was trying to help her learn how to read was by her talking to me about it. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And that's because she she didn't go anywhere. Yeah. She she didn't have one lady and she didn't go unless she went to the doctor. So maybe that was what he was trying to do is to help you know, give her to give me to help her. Mm-hmm. And I tried what time I had, but I didn't have very much time. Yeah, you didn't have much time. Yeah, you're you're exactly right. And, and and Tina brought up an interesting point too to add to that is that the understanding of Scripture, the understanding of the advice of Scripture, comes from who? The Lord, the Spirit of God, the, the Lord's, the Holy Spirit, as it as it teaches, as it guides, as it directs you. The Lord promised, did He not? I will not leave you comfortless. I'm not going to leave you without comfort. I'm going to send a great comfort to you. Which is who? The Holy Spirit. Right? Amen. I'm going away. I'm not going to leave you comfortless. We've looked at that in the past. And you know the reaction of the disciples. I mean, when they heard he was leaving, oh, they weren't going for it. There's no way we're going for that. We've leaned on you way too long, my friend, for you to be leaving. And I reassured him, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. But they were, they were about it. They didn't care. Why? Because they wanted the physical Christ. Mm-hmm. They haven't grown yet. See, I think that when you do what the Lord calls you to do and give out the word, when you give out the word, when the Lord puts it on your heart, then you've done your job. You don't have to feel guilty because he does the rest. Yeah. We're not responsible for what people do in response to that. We're only responsible for what God is telling us to do yeah. or has called us to do. Yeah. And the guilt is not from God. The guilt is from the evil one. He wants you to be yeah. guilty. But your guilt is your sin. And it's covered by Christ. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what I, I mean, I've felt guilty a long time. if we do that wrong. But we did what God told us to do. We brought her up in the Word of God. And I have to be believe in His promises that He's the one that has to bring salvation. There's nothing I can do except be obedient to what I'm called to do mm-hmm. in any situation. You're, you're exactly right. He's the one that saves. All you can give is what the Lord gives you to give Him. what convicts the words what saves yeah and you sometimes I've come away from different situations I think of something like I walked off and then gone and I thought why didn't I say that and as I've heard this a lot and I say it too God's sovereign mm-hmm. you gotta take that word and he'll do exactly what he intends to do with it when you give it out they went into the readers they can't deny that it didn't go. Mm-hmm. And if it's there, and the Holy Spirit is what convicts, the Holy Spirit's what saves, and you don't save nobody. Nothing you can do. That's all you do. I will tell you something. I fish quite a bit in my life. I've caught it, <laughs> and I've lost it. But just because I lost that one out there, he cleaned my hook off. He got a good meal before he left. And that good meal, the one I didn't get to pull in and catch and keep, He's still running loose out there, but he had a belly full when he left, and that's the way you got to look at it. You, you give them the scripture. They may not like you. They may hate your guts, but they got a belly full of, script, full of scripture before they left. Mm-hmm. And it will be in their insides, and they'll hear it, and they'll see it. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit can convict them. If they say no, they just go. It's no. Yeah. That's the thing, too. I, I think about, I, remember, I forget the whole story that you told me in the past about that had just one page of the Bible. That's all yeah. they had. And that's what they treasure. And the Lord mm-hmm. taught them through that. They didn't have the whole council of Scripture to study, to ponder. But the Lord used what they had. And that's what He does with every single one of us. He uses what we have. Mm-hmm. And what we have is what He's given us. Yeah. Because He's sovereign. Exactly right. And so that's where we just have to let that guilt call it what it is. 
Yeah, we're, we're, we're human. We, we, we desire to be in control so much. I mean, that's where you've got, you got the free will, you got man's will, and, and, and you know, you got all that plan coming into place. And man, the more you study scripture, you see that, that the only will man has is to continuously live in a sinful state. You know, he, he has no will to do anything. But we have no excuse. No. Because we have all of this yeah. to give out. Mm -hmm. We need to open our mouths. That's where the guilt should come mm -hmm. and the shame that we, but that we're not opening our mouths because we don't know what God's going to yeah. use. Exactly. Exactly. Christina said the Lord can use one page. The Lord can use one word. The Lord can use one witness encounter, if you will, for the soul of one of His chosen ones. So ask yourself this evening, is it the word of God that pleases you? As in verse 24 it says, Psalm 119. Does that please you? Does the word please you? Do you seek Scripture for advice on spiritual issues? Or do you seek TV or, or whoever? What do you seek for advice? Facebook? Oprah? <laughs> Sounds crazy, doesn't it? But listen, those things are there. Why? Because many people, what? You got talk shows every day. Why? Why is that? Why is it? Because millions watch that for what? Advice. I pray that when it comes to God's Word, it's God's Word that pleases you. It's God's Word that revives you. It's God's Word that, that you long for. It's God's Word that overwhelms you. I pray that it's God's Word that you delight in. I pray it's His Word. It's His Word that you follow. Verse 1, Joyful are the people of integrity. Back in Psalm 119, verse, verse 1. Blessed are the undefiled in the way, or joyful are, are the people of integrity, who walk in the law of the Lord, or who follow the instructions of the Lord. You want to be spiritually joyful? Then follow Scripture. You want to be spiritually a mess? Then close your Bible and don't open it. Pretty much it. There's, it, it, it's, it's, it's that black and white. It's that simple. There ain't no gray area. There's no gray area. I hate when people say there's a gray area. No, they ain't. No. There's wrong. There's a right way and there's a wrong way. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Or joyful are the people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. These are the joyful people. These are the spiritually joyful ones. When you talk about a world, a worldly happiness or a worldly joyfulness. Psalm 119, 1 and 2 is not talking about that. It's talking about a spiritual joyfulness that only Scripture can give you. A spiritual joyfulness. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and then you can go right back up to verse 22 on that. Psalm 119, verse verse 22. It says, bu, 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 bu. Let me find it. Psalm 119, verse 22. Remove from me reproach and contempt, for I've kept thy testimonies. Okay, or don't let them scorn and insult me, for I've obeyed your laws, is what he's saying. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna lash out at you. That's just what's going to happen. You are going to be considered toxic because you stand for something that the world doesn't want to believe or accept. Is that not your apostles? Yeah. Did they there you have go. TV and 
they have a yeah. phone. They, three and a half years, were trained, brought up, matured, mentored, strengthened by Christ using the word of his Father. And what did they go out with? The word. And what was their mission? talks nothing but the word. That's how significant that insignificant word yeah. is. Yeah. You either use it or you abuse it. No in between. No gray area. No. Yeah. No. So the word and that first four lines there in one nineteen. Yeah. getting ready to yeah exactly right they had nothing else but the word nothing that's all they had they had no carts no, no animals no nothing they and no gimmicks but they had the word and they knew all they like Tina said before Adam what Bob said they gave the word out it was the spirit of God to move in the hearts of man. That takes us to Psalm 119, verse 24. So we're slowly making it through Psalm 119, but you'll get into the reviving of the word of man by the word of God, verse 25 on down, and it'll kind of shift gears here and there and bounce around to the end of Psalm 119. But I hope and pray that I'm sure you are getting something out of scripture here and remember you've heard you saying before you get out of it what you put into it right you put in deep study deep meditation deep focus on scripture then you'll be, definitely get something out of it let's pray our father lord we love you and we thank you for all that you do lord and we thank you for this time together this evening that you blessed us with lord god just just remember the prayer requests, Lord, and just uh, keep every request and, uh, dear to you. We know you will, Lord God, and answer them in your own way and in your own will. Father, we do, as always, send a prayer request up for uh, uh, Daniel Phillips and as he's out of the country and far away land, Lord God, but that's where you call him to be. We just ask you just to continue to, to protect him and protect his family. While he's gone, Jay and Eddie and Betty and Janet, Lord God, and all the other requests, Lord God. And just uh, it's great to see Gloria here this evening, Lord, healing well, obviously, and we thank you for all that you've done there. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. <laughs>